morning. 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 Happy Labor Day weekend, and we gather on the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, thank you again for those who are present here in our congregation, and also for those who are worshiping with us online. A word of thanks for the love that you share within this community and your faithful giving and for what we do for the mission of the gospel. I am very thankful uh, to each of you. Also, a word of thanks for the altar flowers sponsored by the Youngs in honor of September birthdays and their 52nd wedding anniversary, which I think is tomorrow. Is that right? So happy anniversary to the Youngs. And then uh, special thanks for the bulletin sponsored by Pat Hammer in, in memory of Russ. Please notice all of the announcements. I'm not going to go through all of them. I do trust that you read through them and mark your calendars and make an intentional effort to join what you're able to join. There will be a Bible study, though, this Thursday, already September 7th. And there is also the call for the uh, blood drive as well. Um, thanks to Chris and our uh, choir, uh, the Calling All Singers, as we're starting back up in our programming church year. Um, and then uh, Marion wanted to, Marion Henry wanted to make sure for us to know that this is the final Sunday to sign up for the church picnic and to pay attention that each person attending the picnic is asked to bring packs of gum or breath mitts for our uh, bags that we're going to share on our God's Work, Our Hands service project. Uh, there's also wonderful information that Marion provided for our children's ministry news and, um, and, uh, that is there for families especially. There is our recovery walk is for everyone. You've been seeing this for the past several weeks. This recovery walk is for those that experience um, uh, actually hurt and pain with um, alcohol abuse and uh, also mental illness. So that's what the recovery walk to support those. Uh, we have a group of people that have prepared and are preparing for that day, but we do ask that uh, if you are, are able to uh, join here on Saturday, September 16th at 9 o'clock a.m., where we are there to cheer and to support those who are walking for those dealing with, uh, with those uh, mental health and drug and alcohol issues. There's also a blessing to the animals on September 16th, as you will see, as well as the uh, Harvest Festival and our new member classes and, and reception, a call for those people in our lives who may be seeking a faith community they are always welcome here, and this is a way in which that they can join in uh, and to learn more about us. Those are many announcements. I ask you to please stand as you're able for our confession and to hear the words of forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given a son to die for us, and for his sake, forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, 
I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
And let us pray with one another. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and we will hear our first reading for today. A reading from Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of Murray makers, nor did I rejoice under the weight of your hand. I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We will now sing responsibly Psalm 26, which is found in your bulletin.
A reading from Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels and the glory of his Father, and he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated, please. So sometimes I wonder if I am making my life a little bit more difficult than it should be. Sometimes the, the path forward of which I am seeking is just going straight. But it can't be that easy, can it? There must be streams to cross and hills that I must climb over, for this is life. For several months ago, I subscribed to a podcast which reads the Bible over an entire year. Each day, the episodes are about 20 to 25 minutes, and the readings come from three books which are found in the Bible. This podcast has reinforced how much is really in the Bible and how many different strands of writings are in it, from poetry to prose to stories of history to allegory to metaphor and parables. There is an awful lot in the Bible, and I cannot remember it all. So when I have a moral decision that I need to make and I don't have the Bible in front of me, it's hard for which I know where I should start. What path should I take? Should I go straight, or should I zig or zag? 
I thought of a reading from Romans today as a very straight and clear path, providing life-giving and necessary information for daily living. The Apostle Paul lays out a whole set of guiding words that Joan read in our reading from the 12th chapter of Romans. Paul says, let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another, which mutual affection, outdo one another in showing zeal. Paul then, after further lists, follows up with these beautiful little listings on the Christian life with a difficult ethic of loving and blessing our enemies. He says, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Do not repay evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. And if it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live in peace with all. Paul has, I think, effectively summarized the gospel of Jesus and summarized it in ways that the gospel is shared or not shared with others. And yet before before we throw out this teaching of Paul as pie in the sky or wishful thinking, we root it first in the word from the letter from 1 John, which says, we love because God first loved us. We can only do these things because of God's love for us. And while Paul is never quite so quotable on this order of things as John, Paul does write of God first loving us. In Romans 5, verse 8, it says that God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for all. And later in chapter 8, he says, Nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And so surrounded and upheld in this undeserved and steadfast love, then the community of Christ then practices that love. Let love be genuine, Paul says. And then he spends the rest of the chapter describing sincere love in various spheres of Christian life. I found very interesting this week in my reading of this lesson that in Paul's list of things that we are to do and not to do, They are all imperative in nature, which means they should have an exclamation point. Over 30 imperatives, which we know then are not suggestions or recommendations, but fundamental and important things in the way of life. And the other thing that I learned this week about this lesson is that all the verbal forms are plural, that these commands are not solely described as my individual life actions, which kind of breeds to me a sense of it being impossible. But these imperatives are a window on what the life of Christ looks like in community. Those things that we are to work on with one another. One is often tempted to imagine Paul saying more off the cuff or don't try this alone. And so his advice today is addressed to all of us, this faith community of St. Paul's. But it's hard, I know, to do these things, even together. Yet we still strive to live this way because of Jesus' love for us. And through that love, we live to others. I often forget this list. But when I gather in a community and come to be fed at the table, I am then reminded of those things that I am to do, encouraged for my week ahead. You may remember that at the beginning of Jesus' ministry in his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus announced that entering the kingdom will call for a righteousness that exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees. In Matthew's unique parable of the laborers in the vineyard, those who are paid the same wage bemoan the master's righteousness in insisting on treating all with the same extravagant generosity. And so it is thus clear that such righteousness is not just piling on more deeds, but it has to do with completely overturning of what it means to be righteous, which is the last will be first and the first will be last. Such righteousness that will lead to the death of God's Messiah 
is that very same righteousness that will call for ones who follow the cross and who in that following are blessed to discover that in giving away to others that there is the blessings of life. For to take up the cross then today is an invitation to be obediently humble in giving of self for the neighbor. And here in this humble, sacrificial, giving love, we all get a glimpse of the kingdom of God. And as we wait then for this fullness of God's kingdom to come for which we yearn, it becomes present then in each of our communities where this confession and this life is bound together in a way of loving and extending mercy in the world. I know so many of you here this morning are carrying deep struggles and hurts for oneself and hurts for the people that you love. We do not know the exact paths for which we will take, but the Lord guides us always on a path of love. And for those who feel your feet slipping off of this path, those here this morning walk with you. I hear the gospel this morning and every morning that I stand in this pulpit, but I see it through your faithful following and your loving ways. And for that, I give thanks to God. So this week, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. And for that, as the people of God, we say amen.
as beloved children of God, we now confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated or kneel for the prayers of intercession. <clears throat> Remembering the caring and gracious works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. God of life, your words are the joy at the heart of your church. Draw those who are seeking a faith community and a closer relationship with you, that you may lead them into this congregation through the Holy Spirit and our invitation. And when they come, that we walk with them as they seek your direction. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. God of steadfast love, we pray for reassurance and wisdom as climate change impacts every aspect of our lives, including work, economic systems, community, resilience, food stability, immigration, and physical and emotional well-being. We remember in prayer those who impacted, who are particularly vulnerable to poverty, hunger, or illness. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. God of patience, lead all to hold fast to what is good. Guide us to show honor to the people in our care. Overcome evil in all nations and grant peace to peoples and places mired in conflict especially the Ukraine. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. God of deliverance, remember all who are suffering, lonely, and in pain. Bring a cure and healing to those who have been asked to pray for, especially Maddox, Linda, Jim, Elijah, Marge, Anna, Stacy, Diane, Anne, Jeff and Heather, Jan and Will. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of justice, on this Labor Day weekend, we pray for the work people do to sustain themselves and their families and benefit their communities and society. We pray that all will receive fair wages and benefits, work in safe environments, receive respect and gratitude, experience joy and fulfillment in their labor, and be rewarded through times of Sabbath. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. God of generosity, let us see that the seed of faith that we sow in life brings abundance and life. Stir in us a desire to give our financial gifts and our time to this ministry. Move us to see the ways we come to trust you in the ways that we give. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. God of love, we pray for the desires of our hearts and the needs in our lives. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of glory, we give thanks for the saints who now dwell with you in splendor, especially Earl, Ellie, Jean, Rochelle, and Lee. Nurture us in faith until the day we join their heavenly song. Merciful God.
Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as you are able. May the peace of Christ be with you always. From your pews, please share that peace of Christ with one another. Let us pray with one another. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then that Jesus put to death our enslavement to sin in the waters of baptism, we find ourselves united to his in resurrection and walk in newness of life. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. people are called to Christ's table, come eat what is good. For those receiving Holy Communion from your pews and those from at home, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Just a gentle reminder that this is the final Sunday to sign up for our church picnic and uh, grateful for your presence. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you, now and to the end of the age. Peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.